Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Game Hub. I'm your host, Gamer K. Time for the second video of the month of May, and I'm going a different route today. I'm going to be doing a ranking video where I rank certain things on a certain series. You know, not many people know as much about Code Lyoko anymore. I don't know why. It was an amazing show. For those of you who don't know, Square Code Lyoko was developed by... I don't really know anymore because the first season was somewhat okay. Like, the first full season of it was okay. For those of you who don't know, little background. Cold Lyoko was this cartoon, French cartoon that came to America and Canada. Which was all about these kids at a private at a private boarding school who discovered the supercomputer in an abandoned factory, discover a what we assume to be artificial intelligence named Aelita in it, and which released a super evil computer virus known as Xana. So the kids have to do, balance school, social lives, and saving the world from a computer virus. Man, plot convenience just has kids saving the day after all, don't they? So the show ran for four seasons four seasons, and it was amazing. And the entire show was great. It had some adult themes in it, even though the kids were only 13 in the show. Uh, they discussed crushes on each other. Actually, that's pretty much it, because they didn't really do a lot of dating in the show. Which kind of sucked. It would have made for good episodes. Why is it whenever it involves teenage superheroes or teenagers saving the world, they never do anything with dating? Really? They could have. But, enough about the show. Let's talk about today's topic. Xana the Computer Virus is an amazing villain. If I ever do my top 13 favorite cartoon villains, he's near the top of the list. Because yeah, we don't even see what he looks like. He's just this virus that possesses and creates forms for himself. But enough about him. Let's talk about the monsters in Lyoko. Because they are some of the most... Honestly, every the, car, the TV show is in cartoon, while the, while the digital world is, is in 3D. Much like it is in uh, Beast Wars and Reboot. I almost draw a blank there. And everything in it is amazing. The environments, the, the way the characters look, and the monsters especially. And that brings us to today's topic. Gamer K ranks the monsters of Xana. Code, well, Code Lyoko monsters, but we're going to go through the legions of Xana. Now, this isn't... I'm not saying that I hate these monsters that are on the, that are on the bottom of the list. I'm just ranking them my personal perception of them. So, and for those of you who don't know what it is, you can look them up online. I'm not going to have images because I don't have the, I don't have the ability to do video editing and all this. But if you want to look them up, feel free to look them up. So starting at number 13, because, oh, also I will only be counting the ones that appeared in the show. Ones that appeared in the video games aren't being counted here because, because, yeah, uh, that some of them are just repaints. And for those of you video gamers, you know what repaints are. Coming in at number 13 is the Colossus. Coming in the last two the last two episodes of season four, the Colossus is this giant lava-like monster. And it ha and its arm is a fully length blade, and it's just creepy. And it's lower on the list, I mean, despite its size and it having more health points than everything else in the in the show, the only way to defeat it is to hit the uh, its face and the eye on its blade at the same time, which I think they did once in the show because it appeared like in the last two episodes of the show before they ever went back to Code Leo went back to Lyoko and everything. So yeah, final boss monster potential, big monster potential, but came in in the last two episodes of the game, so it's on the below lo the list. Coming at number 12 is the Cankrelats, which are the, the weak, very weak enemies. They're like these four-legged, these three-legged 
insect cockroach like creatures that they 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 do better in swarming you with their multitudes than they do a sheer power and just looking at them will give even anyone a little bit of a, of skin crawl they're very weak they're very many but they don't get really high on the list because of that coming at number 11 another late bloomer into season 4 the calamari during season four, they added this gimmick where they go into the digital sea. Very literal there. It's a literal ocean of internet. Props to, props to Moonscope for coming up with all this. And where there's new territory, there's going to be new monsters to prevent your pro process. And the calamar is no exception. It's pretty much like an egg-shaped armored squid with a drill on it instead of a beak in order to break their ship. I like the design of have I like the design of having it, it being a squid with armor around its core as it moves through the water and it can attach itself to the to their ship and pretty much drill a hole through the glass, which is very cool. It's Again, it comes in very late and not so m many in the in the show, which sucks. I hate it when a cool idea is introduced at the end near the end of a show instead of middle of the show because it's wasted potential. So, delete this one and then fry it up for some nice calamari rings. I'm trying my best to make jokes here, people. Stay with me. Coming at number 10 are the Creepers. These ones I like a lot better due to their design. They're kind of snake-like with, with um, like, wormy tentacles for, for legs. They The way they move, it's so snake and, and, and slimy-like. It just looks so creepy. They fire lasers from their mouth, and they are only in Sector 5, which is like the big dome heart area of the, of, of the digital world. Not, not, not Digimon Digital World. Don't, don't, don't you frickin' dare put Digimon stuff at the bottom of this video. I'm just telling you right now. The, the, the design is very, the, the Creeper's design is very basic. They're, 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 the color scheme is brown. And there's not much to go for these ones. Uh, as we continue, we're gonna get into the better designed uh, enemies of the show. Coming at number nine are Blocks. Waiting for a joke to come in. Nope, no joke. And that's spelt B-L-O-K-S. Blocks, which are kind of mechanical creatures, I guess, because they don't really represent an animal, unlike the other creatures of this of the show. So they're pretty much on uh, four-legged appendages on the bottom of the block, and the block spins around and it shoots lasers out of each side. One has a freeze ray, one has a, a ring ray, one has a, just a straight-out laser beam, and they're very fun. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention about these enemies, this insignia of Xana is on all the monsters, and if you hit that weak point, you pretty much eliminate them, which I think is a cool concept for... That was a cool concept for the show. So back to my point. The blocks are okay... They're kind of like the canker lats. They're better in groups instead of being lonely, instead of going solo. So, unless Blocks from uh, Ben 10 Omniverse comes in, or Cubix from Cubix Robots for Everyone, or uh, uh, the Zords from... Um, Doba Sentai Q Juolger come in. I think I'm in the clear when it comes to block jokes. For any of you who know those shows, kudos to you. Man, I'm running low on material here. Coming in at number eight are the crab. And it's spelt with a K, so I'm pretty sure Clance, Clancy Brown's gonna come around here and and I, I I don't know claim copyright notice or whatever. The crabs are not. I mean they're big and red. They got four appendages which gives them some height. They can shoot a laser beam with the, through their eyes, or they could create a a pillar attack for coming from their uh their uh their under torso. Now they don't have claws which I really like. I don't like it whenever 
uh, a concept comes directly from an animal. Like they basic like if it's if it's a lion monster, we'll give it a mane so people will tell it's a lion. If it's a crab, we'll give him crab claws or something. I like a little originality, and this enemy definitely gives the creativity. It's still red like a crab and has a shell like a crab, but its design fit but its design is very unique. Coming at number seven are the Congers. These are these come near the beginning of season four they're it's they're the first water monsters they look like a piranha head with an eel body it's very creepy the way they shoot lasers out of their eyes it, they, they just give you a creep factor and for me water levels are my achilles heel i i i don't have aquaphobia but i just don't like water levels because of the creatures that are in there and just the way you have to move in the game during assassin's creed black flag i legitimately got scared anytime i had to do a deep sea level which su surprisingly for the main story you only did it once and everything else was just optional anyway back to back to my point the congers are very creepy very very sleek in design, and the way they swim in the show, it just makes them all the more creepy. And I think eels are very underrated animals that are used in video games or anime or anything. I think there should be more eel-based monsters and enemies because they're just so slimy and creepy looking, and the design potential is, is limitless there because it's all the different types of eels. So, get two on... Oh, also... In order to defeat these enemies, you need to have, power, have the power of Unagi. Okay, I think I'm trying a little too hard to do these jokes, but you be the judge of that. Coming on number six are the Mega Tanks. Waiting for tanks from war games to come in, and no. Mega Tanks are spherical enemies that open up revealing the eye, and they shoot this beam that goes all the way like high up, like this... Like this way that goes this way. And it's a very powerful enemy throughout Season 1 and Season 2. You can only hurt them once they're once the shell is revealed. And they, they're they very fun enemies to watch. And I'm just going to say it would be easy to get rid of them if you could just lure them over to the edge and have them roll out. Do a, do a milk tank rollout suicide over the edge. Ah, mega tanks are fun, and in the game they're fun to do that. I just kill them off just by leading them to the edge and dodging them as they're about to roll to do a rollout move all over me. If only defeating Milk Tank was better, was easier than defeating these things. And if I ever see an evolution of Milk Tank in the new Pokemon game, I'm gonna start making burgers, pink burgers. Okay, that starts to sound like I'm talking about raw meat, but you know what I'm talking about. Coming at number five, hornets. A good majority of the monsters here have one or two themes. Either aquatic animals that aren't on in the water, mostly, or insect type or insectoid type creatures. And the hornets are the first ones to come in pretty basically re resembling an insect. They are very big, very fast, and like a lot of the enemies in the show, they swarm attack you in numbers. They can shoot lasers out of their stingers, they can shoot acid out of their needle-tipped nose, and just the design of them makes you... It makes actual hornets and yellow jackets look like freaking child's play i'm not kidding these things if you don't if you have a fear of but of, of uh, hornets these guys will st will st will par will s they'll pretty much make you do what i'm doing they will have you paralyzed in fear basically i mean i don't like hornets but they just give me a, the creeps coming on number four the manta this one is another personal favorite of mine. Again, only showing up in Sector 5, they're flying mantas, which is very, very bizarre because usually whenever you hear a manta monster, you normally have them in the sea. But these ones fly, like the way they move, it's just like how a manta would move in the ocean except in the air. Now they can shoot lasers out their, their faces, 
and uh, they can drop mines from underneath, which provide a very good defense mechanism for a majority of the episodes of the show. So I'm, I like how they continue to use it. Not like They didn't just use it for one gimmick for a show, for an episode. They did it throughout the entire series and have that mine uh, mechanic come in. And just hearing they, they're, they're crying out kind of aquatic uh, and bird-like, it's... It's a and also they're navy blue, my favorite color. So I kind of I love these creatures no matter what. Although riding on one like a magic carpet would be pretty fun. Coming in at my top three. Coming at number three, the Scythozoa. For those of you who thought a jellyfish could not be intimidating at all, oh, oh you'd be wrong. This creature is comes up in season two, and its abilities and its design is beautiful. It's got a pink uh, cone upper uh, lower body with uh, four appendages near its near its near the the uh, logo eye. It's got a translucent brain where you can see, and it's got translucent tentacles all over the place. Its ability is once it captures a, one of the key characters, it can steal their memories away from them. And it, it's just frightening. And the most thing is that you can't really kill this thing. They've killed it once in the show, and that was just because they like sent an electrical charge through their ship. That was it. This is one of the toughest enemies in the game, in the show, and... Oh, wait, they don't even do it in the game. That's kind of disappointing. But the main... Th but and, and in Season 3, this, this monster gets an upgrade. It can... T by stripping away its um, memory abil capabilities, it implants a virus of Xana into the host and basically puts them under his control. So this thing is definitely a very, very deadly type of jellyfish. And peeing on yourself is not going to help at all in this scenario. If you know the Animal Planet or you know of Friends, you know what I'm talking about. I'm making a lot of Friends references. Anyway, let's continue. Coming at number two are the sharks. These ones are ferocious. Coming, another aquatic creature coming in late in season four. These sharks don't have don't have fins. They're kind of serpent-like with razor sharp teeth, where they fire torpedoes. But they have that one dorsal fin coming out, and they just look they look sleek as hell. I would love to find an artist who could turn these into vehicles, because I think the like a jet ski with with the paint job of them. I think it could be a cool design. And the fact that they fire torpedoes out of their mouths is, is an elegant design. It makes them more ferocious as an aquatic predator. Now, I've gone through all of them. And for those of you who know Code Lyoko, there's only one monster left on the list. And it's my personal favorite. Coming in at number one, First appearance in Episode 1, Season 2, The Tarantula. These things are gorgeous. I love the design. It's simplistic brown, a little bit of olive green, white. And they, they're they four-legged creatures instead of being a stereotypical eight-legged arachnid. They can... they ha on, the, on their nose, they have, like, these black dots that have their red eyes... Kind of, so it's difficult to see their eyes, but it, it just makes it even creepier. And the way they walk is, oh, it gives my girlfriend the it gives my girlfriend the creeps. And the way they attack is so ingenious. Instead of using thread, they go they go on their one leg and they bring up their front legs and shoot like machine gun style, like turret style, like Cuba Cooding Jr. in Bat in a uh, Pearl Harbor. Show me the money. And I love that they that they're not stereotypical spiders. I love how they how they sh how they took out the eight legged design and didn't have them do thread or poison. It's just basic full on power, and they they have the highest attack power and the highest life points in the show. And and very few d d times do the tarantulas die so quickly. 
Usually they take out at least one or two of the characters before the end of the episode, and I love that. The tarantulas are just by far my favorite monster in the series. And for good reason. Their power, their design, their... Just the basic concept of them alone is what makes me love these monsters so much. Well, for the... For, that's all I've done. That's all for this video. Code Lyoko. Hope many of you know the show. And if you don't know the show, I hope this video gets you a little bit interested in the show. It's been over for a good couple years, but it's still a great show to binge watch. It's a great retro show. It still holds up. It's still as good as the original. It still has a little bit of adult stuff for so kids can actually learn, can actually feel... Like, it's not dumbing down to them. So, the show is always going to be one of my favorites. And I hope, people, it brings back some child, some memories in your childhood. Like, you were thinking, wait, that was an actual show? I can't wait for that moment for some of you. Coming up next week, it's Mere Elementary, my dear viewers. We're going to be cracking some cases with one of the most famous detectives in literature. Until next time, this is Gamer K, logging out.